Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, apologize for for um, um, for for this uh, si technical situation, but um, we have um, the problems uh, to connect with um, our second guest, uh, Mohammad uh, Al Attar. Um, but uh, we will try to connect with uh, him uh, during um, uh, my talk with Veronika Szczawińska. Welcome to Performing Resistance, Dialogues on Arts, Migrations, uh, Inclusive Cities. Uh, this is uh, International Summer School uh, in the frame of European project Atlas of Transitions. Uh, summer School is promoted by Emilia Romagna Teatro Fondazione, University of Bologna and Cantieri University. It is a series of uh, online talks, lectures and dialogues featuring international artists, uh, scholars and curators. Uh, you can follow it on Facebook and YouTube and uh, our talk uh, is the last one in this uh, set. Uh, our talk will last about one hour and the stream will be available uh, in some days. Uh, we will dialogue with our guest or maybe guests if Mohammed will join us uh, for the first um, uh, 40 minutes and then we will open to your comments and uh, and uh, questions so please write your questions be active uh, part of our talk and i will try to collect uh, them and uh, and respond um, uh, so, um, my name is uh, Paweł Starbowski. I'm deputy director of Powszechny Theatre in uh, Warsaw and scholar in Theatre Academy in uh, Warsaw. And now let me introduce uh, my guest, Veronika Szczawińska, uh, is Polish director, dramaturg and scholar, a PhD from the Institute of Art uh, of um, the Polish Academy of Sciences. She has worked with a number of theater around Poland, including uh, National Old Theater in Kraków, Komuna Warszawa, Wrocławski Teatr Współczesny, and uh, Theater Powszechny in Warsaw, uh, where she was worked on Lawrence of Arabia in the frame of Atlas of Transitions uh, project. Uh, Good this afternoon. Sir? Good yes. afternoon. Yeah. I just <laughs> this, this year, Veronika was awarded with the prestigious prize, Passport of Politica uh, Weekly. Uh, and um, our two but absent uh, guest, Mohamed Alatar, oh, maybe is, is some chance to connect with, with uh, him. So I will present Mohammed uh, in hope um, he will join uh, to, to our transmission and to our talk. Um, Mohammed is a Syrian playwright and writer, journalist. He has been dealing with the Syrian revolution and um, the resulting conflict since 2011. Uh, he studied uh, English literature and uh, theatrical studies in Damascus and then completed a master's degree in London. His plays like Withdrawal, Could You Please Look Into the Camera, uh, and While I, I Was Waiting, were staged at uh, various international festivals and theatres. Um, he often has collaborated with Syrian director Omar Abusada, and in the frame of uh, Polish part of the project Atlas of Transitions, they have staged the play Damascus 2045, in Powszechny Theatre in Warsaw. And my idea was to connect uh, Veronika with, with uh, Mohammed and um, uh, try um, to make the point of start for, for this uh, discussion, this, uh, this um, Polish perspective uh, of working in the frame of, of Atlas of Transitions project. But uh, 
of course um, probably the, the the aim of of um, this talk is wider because the the title is performing diversity perspective and limitations and uh, i'm going to start um, uh, with uh, the question about some let's say contradiction um, uh, because uh, we want to talk about possible way for developing the idea of diversity but we live in uh, in the reality of international nationalism uh, the time of prevailing populism uh, chauvinism nationalism and uh, growing prejudices and dis the discrimination and uh, the image uh, of uh, this we we we've just uh, in uh, poland uh, last days la la last uh, week uh, concerning um, um, uh, concerning the, the prejudices and attacks um, to uh, LGBT uh, groups uh, and LGBT uh, people. Um, and this mood uh, created and promoted by far right wing uh, parties uh, has been diffusing into our society in Poland, but I think it's it's um, it's been diffusing into uh, the societies uh, in all the world, uh, and now in in um, COVID nineteen era, uh, these tendencies even started to grow uh, grow up in in my uh, opinion and for example the prejudices against asian people mm -hmm. um, uh, some chinese uh, people were beaten in in poland uh, in the beginning of uh, of um, pandemic in in march um, so so it's uh, for me, it's it's really um, dangerous uh, tendencies, and uh, so my question is probably very difficult. <laughs> and uh, but 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 I yeah. um, I uh, would like to, uh, to 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 ask about it. Uh, how we can build the the vision of uh, diversities? In this situation, isn't it the defeat uh, in in the starting point? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you, Pavel, for this introduction. And uh, maybe I will start with this. Um, to me, everything is about the context. So probably we are not able to change things uh, immediately or to make our societies and cultures and the nations uh, like more diverse uh, in, um, in thinking immediately. But I think that the first step is always, what can you do in your own context? Yeah, because I strongly believe that each of uh, every one of us can, can do something. But uh, the problem is to maintain this balance between radical pessimism and utopian optimism because like these extremes are never are never working yeah so for example we are talking in the framework of the atlas of transitions project and like both of us we we work in theater we are um, like theater people and also scholars so to me the question is what can i do in my own field what can i do in theater and what can i do uh, in the theater academy where i'm assistant mm -hmm. professor and uh, Maybe what is also important to say that I believe in certain obligations uh, that, for example, our theater is uh, still state funded as well as our academies. So I think that being an artist and being a scholar nowadays is also very closely connected with being a citizen. So I don't make any kind of a distinction between myself as a citizen of Poland, as a scholar and as an artist. I think I have certain duties uh, towards my society. And one of the duties is to respond, uh, to use the, um, the privilege that I have, because I have a privilege. I can speak out loud. For example, I'm invited to talks and sessions and debates, and I write articles. 
I have a privilege to work with young people. I have a privilege to meet with them in the classroom as a teacher. Uh, I have a privilege to make performances still. So I have some privilege to invite um, people to join my work. So I think that maybe it's important to think how can I use this privilege and how can you use yours um, to, uh, to promote the, the, the things that are necessary to promote, which is like diversity in every possible context, yeah? whether it would be about uh, the queer uh, part of our uh, society or the queer part of the global society, or whether it's like uh, we're talking about ethnic or racial diversity or cultural diversity, maybe it's the best term to, uh, to put it. So I would start with the context and I would start with recognizing uh, our own uh, privileges and thinking uh, what can we do with them. Sometimes these are baby steps, but those baby steps, they add up to something very big. So maybe it's a bit general, right? Yeah, like, 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 like in Beckett, try again, fail again, fail better. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yes, definitely. Failing better. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe context and, uh, and, and privileges. Um, Okay, so maybe I could start also with something more specific. Uh, also, another maybe old school thing to believe in, this is education, but most of all, uh, self-education. And for example, um, I think that maybe working for a better future or like a more diverse society starts with a serious conversation that every one of us uh, in Poland, I'm talking about my context right now, um, needs to have uh, with himself or, or with herself. For example, um, what are my privileges and what are my prejudices? Yeah. What, um, um, for example, um, if I'm a scholar and if I'm an artist, uh, how many books written by the non-Polish or non-white uh, uh, writers uh, I am I am using or I am reading. Yeah, for example, what is my cultural context? Am I stuck in the circle of like my own culture, or uh, should I expand? Yeah, and for example, educate myself. Maybe I will give one small example from my um, from my practice in the theater academy. One of the um, one of the classes that I am leading. Uh, is a theater workshop, and in the beginning of the uh, of the academic year in October, I suggest that we work precisely on this subject. That we think about performing diversity in the Polish context, and I suggested that maybe we start by reading um, uh, reading um, a short uh, short text by James Baldwin, uh, the first part of his famous book uh, Fire Next Time. Um, um, okay. I'm having some technical problems because I started. No, 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 no. It's, it's okay. Okay, it's okay. Okay, so uh, I suggested that maybe we we'll read this very famous book, uh, like uh, James Baldwin, who is one of the greatest um, uh, writers of the 20th century, who is uh, a bit mm, uh, unknown in Poland, yeah, a very little published. And uh, we we started uh, we started this uh, in uh, 2019, and like um, during this academic year, we were talking a lot about uh, black artists, about James Baldwin, about like artists from cultural contexts different than ours. And now, when the academic year is ending, and like with all the revolution in America and the revolution spreading, like globally, I would say, I'm super proud that my students already knew who James Baldwin was and uh, like uh, that we were doing some work to broaden our horizons so we can understand what is actually happening in the world. So I would say educate, educate yourself. Yes, it's first. difficult to, to imagine better lecture for, mm -hmm. for this month uh, like uh, James Baldwin. So, so to, yeah, to just... Uh, just try to get yourself out of your own context as a reader, as an artist, as a person who participates in cultural activities, as a yeah, just person who is like connected to the world. So just like um, I believe that's maybe the first step, and also to try try to understand uh, um, in the Polish context. Um, 
what is our uh, what is our knowledge what is our prejudice because i think also every one of us is uh, yeah. in our country is prejudiced in one way or another only some of us have this advantage that we can understand what we can change in our thinking and in our practice so let's just start within our own reach mm -hmm. Yes, f f thank you. It's it's interesting because uh, because for 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 me it's um, you know like the part of na na narration of the whole, mm -hmm. and and I I think it's um, it's uh, very important at this time to to create some kind of of uh, na na narration of of uh, the, the 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 whole, and um, uh, I I think um, you know it's like the slogan we need uh, new songs or we need new images uh, to, to, to spread our knowledge, our per perceiving of, uh, of uh, the, the, the world, our mm. perceiving of uh, contemporary um, globalization, etc., etc. And uh, especially in peripheric on, or semi-peripheric uh, Mm -hmm. cultures like in Poland mm -hmm. and and of course um, it's it's a pity Mohammed uh, isn't with with us because this Syrian case uh, is uh, is uh, for, for me very interesting one mm -hmm. in the perspective of uh, of uh, Polish um, mm -hmm. situation and uh, during uh, our common work on Damascus 2045 uh, we spoke uh, a lot uh, about uh, some historical similarities but also mm -hmm. about this the similarities concerning the peripheric uh, mm -hmm. narration and and mm -hmm. um, pe pe peripheric or semi peripheric point of um, mm -hmm. point of view um, so so um, I, I think that uh, yes that that uh, education is um, of course um, some very important point uh, to 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 discuss about possibility how we we are able to uh, build this 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 kind of diversity this narration of, of um, mm -hmm. uh, diversity and spread it mm -hmm. but uh, during uh, during um, our talk uh, when when um, I tried to create the Mm, title for for uh, this uh, meeting your re reaction for for this notion performing diversity mm -hmm. was oh but it's important mm -hmm. to uh, to speak about the limitations mm -hmm. because what mm -hmm. we should mm -hmm. do uh, mm -hmm. is it's, um, a kind mm -hmm. of, of passing the, the the limitations to uh, facing the the limitations and especially in polish culture in semi semi peripheric uh, culture the limitations are something very important but the 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 the, the other side of of this um, peripheral perspective and of course, it's difficult to say that I'm proud to, uh, with this, but mm -hmm. all was like, oh, this fucking uh, Eastern European countries and their problems with democracy. And uh, probably you, you, you felt the same, for example, in 90s, in, in mm -hmm. uh, the beginning mm -hmm. of uh, to, to mm -hmm. uh, that, that it, mm -hmm. it always like, was like, um, the perspective of um, somebody ashaming with, with these problems with, with democracy with, in Eastern Europe. And mm -hmm. now, unfortunately, our uh, Eastern mm -hmm. European limitations spread it to uh, Western uh, countries. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think the problems mm -hmm. are, are probably the same. Oh, Mohammed is joining us. Mohammed, are you hearing us? Uh, yes, but are you hearing me? Yes. Yes, Can you hear yes me? we are. Hi, welcome. Hi. It's it's nice. Uh, but 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 I, I'm using I'm using my mobile, so the connection is not very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but yes, let's try. Uh, okay. This is this is the best now. 
So, so sorry, Veronica, we will continue, but maybe introduce uh, Mohammed uh, to, to, to our talk using this possibility to, uh, to <laughs> uh, the connection. Uh, Mohammed, we, we just um, spoke about, um, about uh, the situation of international nationalism and, and growing populism, chauvinism, etc. Uh, and growing Growing prejudices, and and uh, we, we 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 try to talk what we can do, uh, and and Veronica spoke spoke a lot about um, uh, different perspective of uh, education, and and uh, and approvals of. Um, spreading um, uh, this, this uh, educational um, uh, level uh, and and uh, we we spoke about um, about poland uh, but but the same is with with syrian perspective i think uh, like like you know the perspective of peripheric or semi peripheric culture Yes, and how, how can we deal uh, with uh, with the notion of uh, of uh, diversity? Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that you hear me. Yes. Okay, because uh, to be honest, your voice was not very clear all the time for me. So I just uh, so maybe I missed a few things from your question, but I think. Uh, but but I will give it a try. Okay. 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 First of all, sorry for the delay. I mean, I don't know what's wrong, but I, uh, yeah. Now, hopefully, this will work. And second, uh, thanks for having me. It's a great uh, pleasure to be with uh, you and with Veronica. Eventually. Uh, you can hear me still. Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. I'm just sorry. I'm just doubling check, double check every time. Uh, okay, it's a very, I think it's a very challenging question. And um, for me today, because I have this uh, kind of um, more complicated position of somebody who's witnessing this, uh, somebody who's, who's arriving to a context and uh, struggling to understand the context on a deeper level i'm speaking uh, and at the same time witnessing this uh the rise of uh, uh popular right wing and and uh, of nationalism and of like uh, uh calls for isolationism and 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 uh, raising or building goals and 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 stretching borders and everything and, and my position is strict because uh, I want to uh, uh, examine my practice actually uh, as much as I can far from uh, identity politics, understand what I mean. And this is uh, what makes me sometimes feel like I'm walking on a very thin line uh because from one side i engage in constructing this new phenomena as somebody who's arriving to a context and having this kind of distance of observing uh uh a is, is is not exactly mine but but so i i come with maybe new perspectives to try to reflect on that but on the other side i'm always struggling not to be categorized in in, in a certain corner you know as somebody who is uh, coming from certain background and somebody who's coming from a uh, war zone, for example, or, or you know, all these um, used usually uh, deficient or term, uh, sometimes with intentions, sometimes without intentions actually, but they ended up kind of putting you in a very specific corner. And then your practice would be always uh, uh received by audience uh, and by scholars uh, uh, as only a representation of something specific that you didn't even claim it's something that you just 
it's just part of you it's part of your identity and that's why i by the by being critical of identity politics also because i found it uh, i'm speaking on a personal experience uh, very very um, uh, delicate process of trying to approach uh, 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 phenomena that are not really directly to my context as somebody who's coming from Syria, arriving to Germany four years ago, but very much interested in, in, in trying to understand why we have such, uh, uh, for me at least, scary rise of right wing, uh, popular right wing, far right wing, and uh, also uh, there is withdrawal uh, from, uh, from more progressive Think political or even uh, uh, if not a political party or uh, but but just even like kind of left wing uh, in terms of of uh, organized parties or even just by initiatives so i'm very much uh, interested in engaging in that but at the same time uh, my engagement is most of the time uh, portrayed or or uh, or uh, looked at uh, with a certain angle that I'm trying all the time to chat. That I'm not engaging in these topics only because I'm a Syrian who arrived now to Europe, you know. I think I'm, my engagement is more because I think the struggle uh, towards um, populism, right populism, is not restricted to uh, a certain context and area. And I think uh, that that's my, my, like, the main, uh, I'd say, uh, motivation for my engagement, because I learned maybe the hard way that what's happening in a certain context is definitely not isolated from uh, a larger uh, as, uh, 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 social, political, economic mm -hmm. uh, uh, formation that now uh, from East to North America, to Europe, to to Africa. Yeah. So, so yes, it, briefly, it, it, uh, it, it, and so if it was long answer. Th this is the position I'm always trying to struggle with. Yeah. I'm trying always to to not be defined defined by certain or by very close uh, borders of definition. Yes, in, in one uh, of your interviews, uh, you, you said very strong, very, 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 very strong statement that, uh, that uh, we can perceive Syrian uh, present situation as the future of, of uh, the Western world, uh, as the future of Europe, for, for example. It was, uh, I reminded because it was really so something, some, something very, very touching and strong for me, but uh, I would like to, to um, uh, pass to the next question because I, I see that, uh, that there are some questions from our audience and Angela Schiavilla um, uh, asked um, uh, about something what was also my uh, interest uh, ab about problematization of the role uh, and function of the cultural institutions in, in, in the term of real inclusivity. Uh, and and uh, you, you know real work on on um, uh, on the idea of uh, diversity and and I think we all face the cultural policy education the structure of ensembles uh, basing mm -hmm. on, on the idea of transparent body of the actor for example uh, and. Uh, and to, we, if we want to understand the theater like the tool of embodiment diversity, uh, probably we can't no longer sustain this uh, system. And and could you imagine how we can how we can change uh, something to, uh, to 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 function in 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 the term of real inclusivity in cultural institutions? Mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, yes, of course. This is uh, uh, this is the crux of the problem because uh, one might say that any kind of performing diversity within cultural institutions goes way beyond the topics of performances or pure representation on stage. So it 
it should be about including real people uh, into, uh, into the circle of work, education, and paying money. Uh, so I think, um, of course, what it could mean on a, uh, on a very practical level, and I'm sorry to say that in Poland it's still happening on a too little scale. It's, it's happening, but it's, I think we could broaden our efforts because uh, it's not enough what we're doing. But what it, what it means is like to, um, to change uh, the notion about uh, the change of notion of public institution as resembling something of an outdated national identity. Because if we are speaking about Poland and about, for example, an actor who should, uh, who is like a perfect embodiment of national identity, we would think first about somebody who is male, second, somebody who is white. Yeah, and like maybe most of the cultural institutions like theater schools or like theaters themselves are quite on the subconscious level still immersed in this outdated notion of nation and society and who should embody them. So, well, on the one hand, the answer is simple, just to think how to make your school and your theater company as diverse as possible. But on the other hand, we know that there are certain limitations to that, which on the one hand would include prejudice, and on the other hand, even in the so-called progressive um, artistic circles, there would be some kind of a provocative discussion. Yeah? But for example, why so it doesn't matter anymore? What's your background? Why should it be like this? My opinion is like very, very simple and very strict. We should make our um, cultural circles, our institutions as diverse as possible. But on the other hand, you cannot change uh, um, the, those outdated notions uh, like in a second, yeah? So I think it's mostly on the part of the institutions and people who have power within them. This is the managers and the directors. Because like, for example, Polish theater is mostly driven by these two forces, like people who have the most um, power and who are responsible for money distribution are the managers of theaters and the second in charge are the directors so if we try to um to change something maybe others will follow but this is like a very i don't know if i'm making myself clear uh because in warsaw there's super stormy weather and i feel like i'm very much <laughs> under the under the spell of it but um it should be easy, but it's not. Yes, but uh, w w w what I can add to to to, to your oh, uh, Mohammed uh, uh, disappearing <laughs> after this. What what I I can add is is the, the situation of uh, big atrocities uh, after mm -hmm. after. Uh, especially this year after uh, COVID-19. Uh, I am speaking about it because uh, this um, situation doesn't help to, to develop um, uh, new ideas uh, or, or, or new form uh, of um, uh, institutional activities of, of supporting uh, and um, uh, so, so, so probably it's um, uh, it's a difficult time for uh, for discussing about this subject in Poland and everywhere in in the, the world now but uh, the, the, the the second uh, possibility or uh, opportunity is to use this extraordinary yeah. situation yeah. to 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 create to imagine some kind of new uh, political new institutional um, uh, situation yes and and uh, maybe Maybe it's uh, the the worst uh, time for it, but maybe it's the best. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. oh, Muhammad is coming back. Right. Yeah. But, but can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes we yeah. Okay, great. I'm sorry. Okay. okay, so now we can start our <laughs> discussion. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm not good no, with no, technology. No. I'm, 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 I'm horrible with it. 
it's it's okay you, you are uh, with uh, us in warsaw it's uh, uh -huh. just starting a huge storm uh, so uh -huh. so i hope me and veronica uh, will uh -huh. have a uh, connection yeah. okay okay uh, okay i'm sorry guys Yes, so so um, we we spoke about this institutional uh, level uh, with, with Veronica, and uh, maybe you would like to add something to to this topic. Okay, but uh, can you briefly rephrase the, or uh, tell me the question again, Babel? So I will. Yes, the, 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 the question, it was my question, but also the question from Angela Schiavilla in, in our live comments the, the discussion, the, the, the question about uh, problematize the role and the function of cultural institutions uh, in the term of real inclusivity and real, you know, and build um, the, the real idea of uh, diversity. Uh, I mean, not only that, that for example, we will perform the play uh, about uh, diversity or, or about tolerance, etc., etc., but how we, how we can change the core of our system or or even imagine this this uh, this uh, change and uh, i think for example um, in german institutions uh, in in the last years uh, and it's uh, probably included and connected with with um, Syrian uh, migration, uh, I think in, in the institutions uh, were changed a lot uh, in, in, in this uh, topic. Maybe it's, you know, my, my uh, not so wide um, perceiving of, the, of this uh, situation, but, but I feel some work around uh, this, uh, this uh, idea. Yes, absolutely. I mean, again, I, I, um, I have to be careful because I'm still examining the new context that I'm, I'm working now in, which is Germany, but also Europe, because as you know, like, like the last play I did was actually in Warsaw, not in Germany, not in, in Berlin or in Germany. Yeah. Yes, there is work, I think, but uh, my concern, and I don't want to be uh, a pessimistic, but let's try uh, to play the role of the devil advocate. My my concern is that these attempts to uh, really work on the institutions, not just on the art that is presented, you know, because that is the much ne the more needed actually. How to I don't I don't know if word reform is 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 the right here, but this is uh, what I use now at least uh, to reform the institution and try to make them more inclusive in a very uh, um, in, a, in a structural way, not just in a cosmetic way. You know? My concern mm -hmm. is that these attempts that are happening now in Germany that is that there are a response to uh, a new wave of uh, migration that is, by, by the way, not just from Syria, but Syria maybe uh, have the biggest share of, of refugees uh, arrived recently to Europe and to Germany. My, 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 my feeling or my ob uh, early observation that this is a response that is really obsessed with being politically correct, you know? and not really concerned mm. of being uh, structurally mm. deeply rooted in the mm. in the in the in in, mm. in kind of deconstructing the old establishment and and think mm -hmm. about what is the new establishment and mm -hmm. here we are speaking about the cultural establishment so uh, from from for example uh, creating a, a, an, an ensemble for for exil, exiled artists to for example uh, trying to give uh, uh, like some more margins to people who arrived newly i think these attempts they are good we should encourage them. I also shouldn't be very harsh or super critical, but I think they are stopping in a very, uh, um, uh, I would say, they are, they are not going deeper because I think this question of inclusivity, inclusivity and diversity, it should also start by the local context and not just by responding to uh, an urgent need or something that's happening now. Uh, uh, because also inclusivity, inclusivity and diversity is not about 
who is arriving to your context is about also a, 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 a male dominant, white male dominant on an establishment, for example. It's also about questions of, of uh, minorities who have actually, that are uh, citizens of these countries. They are not arrived four or five years ago, like for example, the Syrian refugees. Uh, you know, they are, uh, you are speaking about third, uh, sometimes fourth generation of people living here and they are still, Giving rules, given rules here and there just to achieve a quota. And I'm a big critical of a quota system in Germany. And that's also linked to what I mentioned in my previous answer, which I doubt was clear anyway because of the connection about identity politics. You know? So mm -hmm. I think, I think, yes, uh, there are things happening, but I would love to see these things happening on a deeper level and with, with intentions not to achieve cosmetic change or not to respond with obsession of doing things uh, with uh, polit polit political correctness, you know, that, okay, uh, our theater is doing this. Our theater is giving room for refugees. Our theater is giving room for more room for women. I think it's the mentality and how we really yeah. ask yeah. this question in a more annoying way, in more disturbing way on ourselves. I'm speaking about those who are running the establishment. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, because, Veronica, mm -hmm. you would like to add yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I just wanted to thank Mohammed because I think you just um, um, said in a very brilliant way what is the very crux of the, of the problem, that it's not uh, about the cosmetic changes, but about the rethinking the entire power system, the entire establishment. And this is also something that we are like struggling with uh, in um, in Poland. That it's of course it's not only about newcomers uh, who are in need, like from countries in danger, but most of all it's about Polish citizens who are uh, neglected or like not allowed to work in theater or like a bit discouraged from theater schools, for example, because they are of different. A cultural context and here I'm thinking for example about a um, very big uh, Ukrainian uh, minority or the Vietnamese minority or the Polish uh, citizens of uh, Belarusian descent yeah or origin so people who would have uh, for example who would speak Polish with an accent so it's all, all, all uh, if they are newcomers or like if they're moved recently um, um, or, for example, who do not fit the description of how a Polish citizen should look like on stage. Yeah. So, um, and also... Yes, like, so, so it's, it's the problem with embodiment and with, with clear language, clear accent, yes, uh, that, that, that uh, yeah. it's, uh, the, the, the actor should be transparent body yeah. and transparent um, yeah. uh, language. Yeah, of course. And sometimes, this, as Mohammed said, sometimes these people are newcomers, sometimes they are citizens for many generations. For example, there are only now there are people who are uh, Poles, Polish citizens, uh, who are also black people who are starting to work in, in theater. Yeah. Before, I would yeah. say that like a few years ago, we would very, very rarely see like performers on the main stages who would be Polish and black, yeah. yeah? And now it's like changing a little bit. So that's why also in the beginning of our discussion, I said that we always need to understand the context and we need to do to see how our context is constructed. And I think what Mohammed said was really, really uh, beautiful and like a big statement uh, mm -hmm. that I completely agree with. Yes, yes, and how how, how complex uh, it, yeah. it, it is, and and I think the, the important thing is is that uh, it's the core of the system, not uh, only cosmetic changes yeah. we, we we need. We we have the question from Bakare Babatunde Allen from Nigeria. Uh, uh, about the future, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, also the the um, kind of my interests uh, how we can think about the future. And the question is, in what ways we can preserve performance of diversity for future purposes? Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 there are surely useful cultural assets for the future. Uh, what do you think uh, uh, about? 
the possibilities uh, yeah. of preserving performance of, of diversity for, for future purposes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm here. Uh, I, I of course it's a wonderful question, but um, I must say that personally I'm a bit concerned about the future. I don't know if we have any, so I think act now. I try not to think about the future that much because like in the past I was in my practice a bit obsessed about it, how to project a better future and it's not coming. So I think that what we sh should do is like to maybe um, uh, take lesson from the past and really approach this punk attitude, uh, do it now, yeah? Because there's no, uh, if there's no future, we can make a better world now. So I think uh, maybe we should just think what's the most urgent thing to do, whom we can hire, what can we read, how can we help, like right now. And if the future comes, it will be better. It will be better this uh, this way. But also, like speaking in a more serious way, I think that there is some connection. Also, to be able to act now, we need to rethink our past. For example, Pablo, before you uh, mentioned that, like, uh, what is maybe important context for this conversation is the idea of the peripheral countries, like Poland. And I think that maybe the most important step is to embrace it in our society that we are a peripheral country in a way, and that maybe in our past, we also, we should re-examine our history, not to think about uh, ourselves as the outcast of the Western uh, society, but maybe the ally of the countries who were colonized or who had like difficult. So if we see ourselves, for example, historically, not as a part of a Western narrative, but of the as a post-colonial country, we uh, we um, we will be able to establish a different kind of a narrative about ourselves, and maybe think about us ourselves differently in the present. But about the future, I don't know. I hope it comes. Yeah, Mohammed, and to uh, your hope, uh, your uh, your hope uh, concerning with the future. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's, I personally believe that when we work on the future, we actually are seeking to work on the present, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, an art, actually, a uh, work of art that uh, try to project the future or foresee the future. In reality, they are deeply engaged with the present moment and trying to, uh, 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 to, to run away to the future or to try mm -hmm. to foresee the future but they are actually very engaged with the current moment so this is my my understanding when art dealing with the future so either mm -hmm. the, the when, when when we work when we do this topic or science fiction or sci-fi or a very fictional mm -hmm. uh, treatment of the future we always of course are very engaged and very concerned about our present moment and sometimes what we project for the future is warning for what uh, is happening now and what we should do. Saying that, and I agree with uh, uh, many of uh, what Veronica said, I think if I learned something from the political struggle in Middle East, and uh, especially uh, after the brutal crash of the uh, uprising in the Arab world, and, in, uh, and especially in Syria, is that we need to also accept that uh, struggles in, from art institutions to even changing political regimes, unfortunately, because I believe everything is connected. Okay, it's not it's not a call to say don't do anything till you change a political regime. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying mm -hmm. things are really organically connected. Saying that, um, and what I learned the hard way from the Syrian experience and from the Syrian tragedy that it's still ongoing is that uh, these these struggle need to have really a long, long, uh, we need to be patient and we need to, be, uh, uh, to expect that sometimes uh, the results will not come now. Mm -hmm. uh, the results might not even my generation sometimes will witness that, uh, but we have to start now. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, so from one side, I don't want to be obsessed with the question about the future mm -hmm. and of, of imagining what the future would be or if, uh, or expecting exactly that I need to do this because the future should be that. I, I, I am not there. But at the same time, I need to accept that many things will not be, uh, will not 
change that rapidly. They need really, uh, we need to accept that it's a long-term strive to achieve many things, especially on the political, economical level. So uh, for me, I combine both uh, together when I think about the future and uh, when I think about how art can tackle uh, this, uh, this topic. Yes, we, we, we have 10 additional minutes because, uh, because, because of, because of, of me. me. <laughs> because of technical problems. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry again for that. I'm sorry no, for the audience, no. for people who are also watching us live. I'm really sorry for that. Yes, it's it's um, it's okay. Uh, so so um, yes, uh, I um, I try to um, write the, the questions and uh, please uh, our it's for our uh, audience. Uh, we are open for for new questions. And uh, Lorenza Ippolito uh, wrote, I agree with Veronica that the people with power are, are the people that can start making changes. At the same time, uh, Freire teaches us that this is not how it works. It is the oppressed that have a triple struggle on their hands to first acknowledge their oppression. How work uh, to free themselves uh, of the oppression and then tackle the blindness of the oppressor and em emancipation. And the question is, is there any hope that, that we can see changes uh, come from the institutions traditionally ra racist and oppressive mm -hmm. in different ways? Uh, mm -hmm. We, we spoke uh, a little about it, but maybe it's it's good idea to to develop this uh, question. Uh, I think I think there is some hope, and um, I um, maybe I will refer to a specific experience I had uh, last uh, f uh, autumn, uh, because in the in October uh, 2019. Um, um, the institution I work for, which is like Theatre Academy in Warsaw, organized a conference of theatre schools from around Europe, and the topic was uh, violence. How to uh, how to respond to the problem of um, I don't know mobbing, uh, Me Too, uh, or like discrimination on every level? Because it turned out that as as it was said before, like uh, these are these institutions are like fundamentally racist and misogynistic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what was giving hope was uh, like the presentations from the schools around Poland and around Europe. And I would refer to a very particular example that was like super important and super touching to me. It was a um, presentation uh, of the people from uh, um, Paris uh, Theatre School, from the Conservatoire, who discussed their policy in accepting students from different backgrounds. And like what they showed us was like that it completely changed in less than a decade. That for example, they understood how uh, imperial and racist and colonial institution they were accepting only like uh, French citizens of like French, back, uh, let's say French background and uh, now they completely change the attitude. So they are just, and it's not only about the attitude, but they also funded several programs who, uh, for example, can encourage and like help people from, um, how to put it, um, maybe a bit um, underprivileged backgrounds who would like to enter theater schools. And like many of these people are, for example, French citizens, of post-colonial origin, if I must say so, if, if I may say so. So all these actions like um, actually um, resulted in the complete change of the structure of the uh, of the of their um, like student uh, student community. Yeah, there are like people who are like uh, I don't know French citizens in first generation who are newcomers. So to me, it was like super touching that people who, in a way, uh, the institution that in a way embodies like the European white Western canon would open themselves and like would recognize it, it doesn't mean that they're not struggling because they were like very honest in their approach. And they said also that 
there are many problems in clusters yeah people don't know how to communicate with each other so it's not like a living utopia but still i think uh, there's a lot of hope even with this example that uh, those institutions can change but there there's a, oh, as always there's need of leaders who will say okay we need to make an effort it's going to be difficult it's going to be painful it's going to be awkward for us uh, because we will have to um like face our own own privilege and prejudice but okay we need to do this so uh, there's some hope and like to me as mohammed said everything is connected so for example this network of solidarity that there are like different fields that we recognize have common interests yeah like people from um economically troubled backgrounds or like ethnically troubled backgrounds or the newcomers or i don't know the queer people or like uh, or women it's also mm -hmm. about women all the time yes yes the, the gender so we need to like uh, see also all these problems um connected and like this solidarity can make us stronger in changing the the fundamentally um, racist institutions okay mohammad uh, I'll, I'll try to be brief. I th okay, honestly, I mean, again, I, I'm, I'm speaking about about uh, an experience of 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 of, of movement, political movement, the grassroots movement that started in the Arab world in 2010, 2011, and then was crushed brutally by a counter revolutionary force and, uh, forces and by proxy wars and by uh, foreign intervention and, of course, by uh, dictatorships. Yeah. that we tried to 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 get rid of but they were much stronger than we thought i would say that i'm all in for always radical uh, changes in all levels from mm -hmm. again from from yeah. from uh, uh, art and cultural institutions to 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 uh, uh, po po political regimes or to 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 the status quo in, that we have in the world uh, more or less now in many places uh, and I, I, because I have doubts that people in power, people with privileges, people with advantages, I have doubt that they are willing voluntarily to give up, to give their, give away their advantages. You know, why, why they sh should do that if they were not pushed? Again, but saying all of that, it would be easier actually if some of the oppressors, metaphorically, joined the oppressed. It would be nicer and easier if some of those people with advantages and privileges and uh, those in power realize that they can share that or realize that this is toxic. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. not leading anywhere. So we need to keep this hope because honestly, if you are all the way ending up clashing these people in power in different levels, I'm not saying it's a hopeless case, but I'm saying it's always painful. It's always uh, you are paying heavy price emotionally, physically. Again, from from a struggle in a tiny artistic institution to struggle to topple an authoritarian regime. So I would always welcome and I will always give some hopes up. Some people in power, some people in higher positions, some people who are having these privileges would be willing to give away this privilege or to open up to a genuine discussion. Uh, so we need, based on that, to examine context by context. You know, Sometimes, mm -hmm. as Veronica gave now a brilliant example, things could change from within the establishment, from within the institution. You can find uh, 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 channels for conversation and then you can push for some serious change, not just again, cosmetic change yeah. but sometimes sometimes and i'm afraid many times uh, it won't work uh, you mm -hmm. need to really uh, destroy this we need to destroy the old and try to build something new but we need to be aware that it's this is difficult this is uh, it won't happen easily people will resist people sometimes actually when they feel they are attacked for the right reasons they became more aggressive so mm -hmm. so we need to be aware of that Okay, thank you. And and the last question from Alberto Crisafulli. Um, and uh, this this question um, uh, concerning um, the discussions about paradoxical situation um, uh, in the arts field. 
uh, that sometimes artists are invited by, by cultural institutions because they are refugees or asylum seekers of, or uh, migrants uh, and uh, the identity is at stake more than uh, the art uh, work and Mohammed uh, during our meeting in Gothenburg uh, last year or, or two, two years ago, uh, you uh, you spoke about uh, something similar uh, that that, that uh, you are refugee artist and uh, and <laughs> what you can do with with this position and this uh, situation. So maybe first uh, Mohammed and then uh, Veronica. Sure. Yes, yes, sure. And I tried with, with a very poor connection that we had at the beginning also to refer briefly to this, uh, this dilemma that uh, people like me face arriving now to a new context, whether it's Europe, whether it's somewhere else, like when you are forced, displaced, and now you are moving your practice or trying to start a practice somewhere else. Uh, it is a big challenge because from, from one side, it is a fact. I mean, my legal status here, like in Germany, I'm an asylum seeker. This is a fact. So nothing to hide from, nothing to be ashamed from. Uh, this is a fact. So this is one thing. On the other hand, you need as an artist, an art maker, as a cultural figure, whatever, cultural practitioner, you need to fight all the time not to allow this fact to determine your presence in the art scene. Okay, it is a fact, nothing again to be shamed of or to hide from. It's, it's, it's actually already determining your legal situation in this context, but it shouldn't determine how your art practice is seen or how you are commissioned to do art. And this is a big struggle again. Uh, and the struggle is mainly, uh, is uh, not mainly, sorry, but the front line is between artists from one side, artists who, who, who have this, uh, a condition or disposition and the art institutions uh, uh, the, and the curators and the art managers and the directors of, of the art institution. Because again, uh, many of those, I would say, drive by good intention, combined with naivety. I don't want to be cynical and say bad intention because there is bad intention. Again, they are obsessed of this being political correct. Okay, we need to open up. We need to include those people. We need to have them on, on board. We need to uh, give them opportunities, okay? But the problem with this attitude, if it doesn't really question things on a deeper level, is that actually it's only emphasizing the hierarchy. It's not changing it. It's actually, it's giving you a room, but it's, only giving you room to uh, to put you in that specific corner. That whatever you do, whatever you do, you will always be uh, uh, the art, the reviewty artist. You will always be the artist who is expected to tackle certain topics. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and the extra problem here is, so, is that sometimes you need to tackle these problems. For example, just not to give abstract example, I will speak about my practice. Okay. I moved to Europe more than four years ago. And before even moving to Europe, I was touring in Europe with work. Uh, and uh, my decision since 2011 is to focus on the Syrian context, but linking it also with, 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 with the world politics. So yes, I'm going very deep in trying to deconstruct the complexity of the Syrian situation, but, but my attempt is to put this side, side by side with what's happening in the, uh, in the, in the world also, uh, emphasizing that Syria is actually, in reality, a, a neat mirror of uh, the horrible uh, ethical and political situation that we live in the world today. So, yes, I am intentionally focusing on topics related to diaspora, to war, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, proxy wars. I want to do that. So, but... I don't want, because I want to do that, because right now I cannot do work about love story or I cannot, for example, adopt a Shakespearean play outside the Syrian context uh, or a Greek tragedy outside the Syrian context. Uh, 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 because this is my choice. I don't want to be ending up only uh, being commissioned or uh, located in that specific corner because I think the work of art uh, first and foremost, should be approached 
uh, and deconstructed as as a work of art with the artistic elements on it. Okay, so if I'm tackling a certain topic, it doesn't make my work better or worse just because of the topic. We should see the work uh, as a work of art, and then based on that, uh, go go and 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 the next step is see is see uh, the other elements. But first and foremost, we should approach the uh, the art practice in a very very how to say mutual respect, you know, and and uh, and. I think the main responsibility here is on the art institutions and curators, because I think willingly or not, knowing uh, with, a, with with good intention or bad intention, they are most of the time failing these artists, or most of the times are not managing really to question things beyond this first level of having somebody with a certain background or somebody with a certain trauma, but but. Just to be fair, also it's also a responsibility of the artist, especially artists who have experience, artists who are not, uh, how to say, starting now their practice, who've been practicing for a while. Mm -hmm. I think also they have a responsibility because they can distinguish when the call is only a response for a certain trend related to the market. Because as you know, it's not a secret in art there is a market like in any other fields. You know now. A refugee crisis is a trend. Let's do something about refugee mm -hmm. crisis. Now war is a trend. Let's do something about war. Now Black Lives Matter is a trend. Let's do something about black people. You know, so an artist can tell when this curator or art institution, art institution or a festival invitation is only to respond to this uh, market trend, or when this invitation mm -hmm. is genuine, and this mm -hmm. invitation is is having genuine mm -hmm. interest. And will locate the work next to works from different uh, topics and from different parts of the of 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 words of the world that is not engaged only about identity politics or about origin or about nationality or about certain trauma. So I think artists also are not totally innocent. So we shouldn't all, all we shouldn't only put the blames on the curators or art institutions, though they are have more power and th though they have uh, how to say more power to determine because also they have the power on the financial resources nevertheless i think artists also should hold responsible sometimes or many times sorry mm -hmm. thank you veronica would you like to add something yeah definitely but well i couldn't agree more with uh, what muhammad said especially maybe i will start from what you said in the end that uh, like it's also the responsibility of the artist to recognize the the context is it like real work or is it cosmetic and if i may allow myself for a joke uh, the choreographer with whom i work she always asks me is it does this institution want a real international work or is it just united colors of benetton yeah because we also um uh, we are market we tend to think in this uh, in this way so maybe I would add one more one more thing to this discussion because of course identity is a very complex thing and none of us is only a representative of his or her social or cultural background or yeah like like this but also I'm um, how to put it um, I think that we should be aware of all of this but also there is nothing wrong especially in countries like Poland, who are quite racist, I'm really sorry to say, uh, to invite so. <laughs> people to work because of their background and of their race. There is nothing wrong with that. Because we sometimes, uh, sometimes um, people who say, okay, but uh, this person is invited only because uh, she's black or he's a refugee or she's Syrian, this is the priv white privilege speaking, or like any kind of privilege. Uh, and judging. And judging, yeah. So I would say, of course, we need to, um, as Mohammed uh, described it in detail, we should be very, very careful with all of this. But on the other hand, especially in countries who have problems with diversity, we need to put some trust in the curators and in the managers. They're really inviting people who have something to say in art. And there is nothing wrong to curate diversely for a purpose. 
True. I just to add one thing uh, very quickly on, on what mm -hmm. I, I totally I totally agree. I think I think it's a critical. There is no yeah. clear like white yeah. and black here. I think mm -hmm. we need to find the right balance. Yeah. Uh, but again, my concern is that let's just speak about the good intention, not the bad intention. Yeah, the people who are really genuinely trying to be more inclusive and to give room to people who yeah. who are struggling to find uh, margins. You know, yeah. I think I think I, I I would encourage those people because we need that uh, to to just I mean go slightly deeper in in the, uh, in in in, uh, in making this uh, how to say. Uh, more structural and systematic, and not just, mm -hmm. uh, not just again uh, out of 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 the urgent, which is good. I'm not saying it's all bad. Mm -hmm. Urgent need yeah. to respond to an immediate thing, or to urgent need to respond to uh, to uh, to emergency or something. I, 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 because honestly, and uh, also from an experience, this will not also serve the artist on the long terms because the artist might might yes get first much needed opportunity much needed opportunity or even the second much needed but then he will found or she will find herself restricted on that you know and that really will not serve her or him on the longer term yes of course just one brief thing to add because this is this whole discussion about um, cultural funding that we need to uh, maybe think less in terms of grants and fashion, more in long distance uh, sustaining, fostering the artist. Because you're right, war is not a trend. Trauma is not fashion. Yeah, it's not things that can be used and like it's real people behind it. So it's a wider discussion about how we how we curate and how we fund fund. Yes, it's it's very important, and and um, you know we we are finishing um, um, with uh, some some kind of developing the the, the, the statement um, uh, with uh, from Veronica's beginning uh, when when uh, she told about. Uh, this necessity of of spreading the perspectives very different uh, perspectives yes that that, that, that it's our uh, aim it's it's our possibility uh, like uh, artists or or teachers uh, scholars etc etc yes that that, that that we are able spreading the the, the, the perspective of, of of thinking and probably uh, this is some some point of start to taking over the melancholy, uh, the dystopian imagination, and created uh, cre cre creating new, um, uh, maybe utopic, but but new visions of of the um, future. And uh, to to summarize, it's uh, th th this very interesting dialogue. Um, I I would like to. Uh, speak about the notion of American sociologist um, Jeffrey Alexander. I like his notion of useful fiction. And, and I think that maybe it's uh, our tool uh, to, to work and to, to do something in, in uh, cultural institutions, in performances, in, in, in projects, uh, you know, to imagine that, that uh, the fiction uh, we are able to create uh, is something or become uh, something useful. Thank you very much for for uh, this um, uh, talk. Uh, and this is unfortunately this is the the last um, uh, discussion uh, in the frame of international summer school. It, it's last uh, meeting. So um, all curators and organizers uh, thank very much uh, all the people uh, have been participating in in um, the discussions. Uh, and as I know, I, I hope it's true that uh, the um, uh, recordings of uh, the meetings uh, will be still uh, on YouTube uh, in some uh, days. So uh, it's possible to uh, to 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 see uh, the the recordings um, uh, it, pr probably in this uh, this uh, week. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Thank you. Mohamed. Thank I'm you, Baba. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, that uh, it's uh, everything okay, and you you were able to to yeah. connect. Um, I'm I'm, ve I'm very I'm very sorry for the start of this. So uh, just I would have loved to join you earlier, but uh, I just I couldn't figure out the technical problem. So I'm very sorry for you and for everybody who was following us. Not a problem. It's understandable in the situation uh, we we are living uh, now, or we've been living uh, from uh, three months. It's it's I think uh, useful uh, situation that there we are connected with uh, with um, the the equipment possibilities. Uh, so so let's say it was fourth actor of our. Uh, meeting uh, to today and the the, the, the equipment and um, thank you very much and i hope uh, see you uh, soon live maybe yes, in bologna so maybe in warsaw uh, maybe somewhere else thank you very much once uh, again thank, thank you, you so much ciao ciao, ciao.